Oh, Goby, just one more cut should do it. Here we go, and... Ta-da! It's a snowflake. Snowflakes are a beautiful part of our world, and they're also very fascinating. One place that's no stranger to snow is Lake Placid, New York. Once a year, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center co-hosts a program called the History of Winter. It's there that students and teachers can study, you guessed it, snow. Let's visit some experts there and find out why NASA has such an interest in the science of snow. So the idea was that the students would truly become engaged in scientific research. It wouldn't be a word problem in a book. It'd be something they would literally be outside looking at something they could analyze, something they could study, they'd have to dress, they'd have to prepare for the elements. When students look at a snowflake, because of what they've learned, what we've learned about the structure and everything that goes into forming a snowflake as it's falling from the sky and the different changes that it goes through, that a snowflake represents a history of what happened in that snowflake on the way down. So if I stare at a snowflake and find out exactly what it's been through, you could call me a snow detective. But what causes snow, and where does it come from? Snow is not rain that freezes on the way down. That's how we wound up with sleet. Snow is basically something that forms directly from water vapor in the air. The cloud conditions, have, first of all, have to be cold enough, and then you need a little bit of, of uh, dust to nucleate a little tiny ice crystal. Then, as those snowflakes fall, as they pass through different layers of temperature and different percentages of humidity, and as the wind blows them around and as they bump into other snowflakes on their way down, all of those factors go into the actual shape, and you wind up getting more of the star-like pattern that we're familiar with. Looking at a snowflake really does tell so much about its history as it's falling. So if no two snowflakes are alike, then what are the different types of snowflakes? <laughs> that is what the students are most interested in. And they see there's such a wide variety. And most snowflakes, or many snowflakes, don't look at all like what most people think of in terms of a snowflake. Some of them look like bullets. Uh, they literally have a pointy end. And when you walk into a driving snowstorm and, and it's hitting your face and it kind of stings, and you look at the shape of those crystals, well, that makes sense. Or they look like hourglasses, what we call hollow columns, or cap columns, which almost look like spools of thread and they're such a wide variety, but they're still all ice crystals. At the History of Winter event, teachers and students look at the shape of snowflakes, then record the weather conditions. They're building a huge database of crystals and weather conditions to discover connections. But why do all this research? As much as we've learned about the Earth system itself and what a complex system it is, the more we realize that there's so much we don't know. And as we learn more about something as simple as a snowflake and the conditions that take to form a snowflake, it helps all of us have a better understanding of the way the atmosphere works. Hopefully we will learn more about the conditions that change and affect climate. Who knew you could learn so much from something as small as a snowflake? I think I'm gonna go outside and be a snow detective too. Come on, Globy. You can be a snowflake detective too. Just go to the History of Winter website and download the forms.